Hey there, Bourbon Real Talk viewers. You guys have been asking us, one, to do more blinds, and two, to give you some rankings. And we're going to do it today. We are going to rank the top eight Kentucky distilleries, so stick around. Let's get it on. All right, Wes, per the use, we have to do some disclaimers. First off, top was defined by production capacity. So there are a lot of distilleries that are in Kentucky that are not represented here. Mm -hmm. And we cut it off at eight because, I mean, it's kind of hard to, to rate more than eight whiskeys. And it's a Monday afternoon. And we it's a Monday afternoon. Completely drunk. So there's that. Um, and also, we maybe stupidly decided to do all higher proof uh, versions. Yeah. Um, because that's what we prefer to drink. Sure. Um, and so we we picked a representative bottle from each one of the top eight distilleries, and we went with one of their higher proof offerings. You can see them here on the table. Got some good ones. Got some good ones. So uh, what do you say? This is a blind. Lindsay set this up for us. We have no idea which juice is in which glass. Yeah. And so let's taste it up and see Jump what happens. Right let's go. All right. categorize these in our favorites as well uh we're just uh ranking them number one through eight okay cool. yeah we don't have to guess which is which or okay. anything like okay. that yeah why are all these so delicious bro because it's bourbon yeah but i mean like the first three i was just like mm, dude i get straight up great big league chew on this whatever this one is one two three four five okay wow i didn't even know any of these had those had that specific uh profile to it okay there's the booger <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here was the order that we tasted. Mm -hmm. So on our far left, we have four roses, uh, single barrel, cash strength. What did you rank that? I ranked the four roses in the uh, the, fi the five hole. The, the five? Fifth, fifth place. It was number three for me. Uh, four roses. Uh, we're going to do a little distillery history while we reveal these since okay, we're yeah. ranking the distilleries. We so, might as well. Yeah, so Four Roses, real interesting uh, story. If you go to figure out where their name came from and you read on their website, they have this whole story about their founder um, and, and a marriage proposal. His name was Paul Jones, mm -hmm. and it says that he proposed to this uh, woman, and there was a ball, and she said, if I show up wearing Four Roses... Um, then I'm saying yes to the marriage proposal. And do you want to know how we know that that's absolute BS? Um, somebody asked her? He died a bachelor. Oh. Never well, got married. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. The, the true uh, well, maybe story. Maybe she, she didn't show up wearing the roses. May, well, they, the story says she did. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. right. So uh, what, what's more likely the case is that there was this uh, Victorian era style of communi business communication. So when you made a business proposal to somebody, they would send one rose back to acknowledge receipt, two to reject, three for more time, and four to accept. Yeah. And so four roses was designed to be the whiskey you drink to celebrate the consummation of a business relationship. Oh, yeah. That sounds more accurate. So uh, the second one that we had was wild turkey... Is it uh, rare That's breed? That's the rare breed. Rare breed? Barrel okay. proof. The barrel proof rare breed. And that was one of my, my top contenders right there. That one just barely finished third place edged out by uh, a future bottle we'll get to. But that was my third place finisher. It was my second place finisher. Mm, nice. So we've got uh, Wild Turkey coming in strong for I both know. of us, right? I know you're a Wild Turkey fan. Yeah, anyway. I'm a turkey fan. All right, little mm. little turkey information. So the name Wild Turkey 
uh, came from a 1940 turkey hunt where an executive from Austin Nichols took some of his friends out. He had some barrel samples. They kept asking for more of that good uh, wild turkey whiskey. Yeah. And in 1942, cool. they started the brand Wild Turkey. Love it. Um, and then there was, uh, let's see, what year did they actually, because they didn't make their own whiskey for a really long time. They were contract distilling. Yeah, until 1971, they bought the distillery and renamed it the Wild oh, Turkey yeah. Distillery. So Awesome. All good right, stuff. so number three, we've got Booker's. You know, this one really surprised me. And I am normally a massive Jim Beam fan and uh, love Booker's. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's just my palate being weird after the Torchy's Tacos today. But it finished seventh. Seventh. Finished fourth for me. Well, I'm, and again, I'm ashamed of myself. I should have my, my uh, I should be removed from the Jim Beam fandom collect, uh, you know, congregation, but... You know, I was having an off day. Yeah. Off it, day. No, okay. it's okay. It's still good. I mean, it, me it, was, it, was it was up just, to, yeah. it was just seventh place finish. I mean, we're, these are all 90 plus point. Yeah, right? absolutely. So it's like, yeah. If one's a 96 and one's a 92. Right. It, it, they, exactly. They yeah. still got an A. Yeah. Right. All right. Yes. So uh, let's see. The Booker's information that, uh, that I have for you guys. These are not in order. Uh, that's why I'm struggling to find them. Mm. Uh, in 19, or sorry, in 2014, Beam was bought by Centuri, a Japanese company, and the Japanese have a style of management that is uh, a continuous process improvement. And so right after the purchase, the Japanese management's like, hey, good news, American whiskey makers. We're going to use our process improvement, and we're going to help you make even better whiskey. <laughs> and everybody in the United States was like, uh, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. We've man. been doing this for a minute. Yeah, yeah. we're you, pretty much. You can't improve on perfection. <laughs> so it was like this big up, upheaval and all that stuff. So that was kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right, uh, what do we got number four? Number four, we've got the Maker's Mark. Um, and... I am also, again, sad to say, it was my eighth place finisher. Eighth place for me as well. Really? Yeah, last place right here. And again, these are all 90 plusers for us. We would. It's not that it's a bad whiskey whatsoever. It's a shelfer for me, and I know it is for you. I yeah. drink a whole lot of it. You can see it's it back on. In this, in this lineup, for whatever reason today, it fell to the bottom. It fell to the bottom. So Maker's Mark, very interesting brand. Um, so their kind of claim to fame is that they're a wheat-based uh, bourbon. So... Um, I think that all of these others are uh, rye-based bourbons. Uh, so they're a wheat-based bourbon. The founder was friends with Pappy Van Winkle, probably the most famous bourbon in the world. And he got the recipe from Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah. Almost had the same yeast strain that they made the original Pappy Ooh. from at uh, Stitzelweller. But um, the master distiller, who was also a bean, by the way, almost all the master distillers in Kentucky are from the bean family, mm. even when they work for other brands, brought his own yeast in. So we have the Stitzelweller mash bill, but we have we don't have the yeast. I got gotcha. you. So we almost ended up with something that was akin to what can't yeah. be found anymore. So yeah, and luckily we didn't, because now you can still buy Maker's Mark on the shelf. That's right. What do we got? Number five. Number five, and no surprise that it's one of our favorites, and it actually it is. I think both. Of our favorites. Uh, my first place finisher was the Stag Junior. My first place was Stag Junior as well. So we we agreed on the first and last, the and first everything and else last. in between. Was, we, we, we were all over the joke. place. But yeah, I mean, it, it rose to the top. Um, I mean, again, in the narrowest of margins, my next the next bottle we'll get to was right there with it. But you know, it, it grabbed you right from the beginning. You said, yeah, as soon as I tasted it, I was like, this this this, this has got to be it. Yeah. yeah, and and once I once I you smell that, and I always get that cherry pie like baked cherry on the nose. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this could be it. Tasted it, mixed with delicious. a ton of vanilla. Yeah. it's just it's, it's yeah, it's so good. So a uh, little factoid about BT: they have been making whiskey at that facility continually even through prohibition since 1812 that okay, location a little bit of time there. yeah a, 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 little a little bit of, bit of time. history um, I'm, I'm a little confused by that because there were only six um, permits that were issued and uh, but I think it was uh, Shinley's permit that they were mm. uh, it, it says that Colonel Blanton bought the distillery in 1920 which would have been after prohibition and I think that he might have been uh, distilling for Shinley but anyway that's the, the yeah. little factoid Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. 
Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com. All right, awesome. number six. Number six uh, up next is the foolproof option from 1792. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had it in my second place hole. I liked it. I thought it was great. It, uh, again, narrowly beat out the uh, the rare breed, in my opinion, um, but uh, had it in second place. Seventh for me. Seventh, okay. Yeah, which shocks me because I'm a big 1792 foolproof yeah. fan. Interesting. But up against these other contenders, um, it, it was yeah. a tough call. Yeah, all my these, palate, my palate might have start started to get burned out by yeah, the it, six cast strength. Yeah, though. eight eight cast strength uh, whiskeys are very hard to do a blind on. So yeah, very hard. Let's leave that a little asterisk in there for all you whiskey trolls who might still be for whatever reason watching this video. Whatever, yeah, maybe you should skip up, skip over to yeah. something else. All right, so uh, factoid: the distillery is actually Barton 1792. It's mm-hmm. not the 1792 distillery. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a handful of products, but Thomas Moore was their founder. Interesting backstory. He was part of another distillery. It got bought out. He worked there for another 18 years, retired, mm. bought land next door, built a new distillery. Then the distillery he left went bankrupt. He bought it, it combined <laughs> the two, and that's what we know as 1792 yeah. today. Such a baller move in the whiskey right? community, right? Right. It's <laughs> like, you know what? It's not working out for me. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And, and then, never mind, it's working. I'm going to buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's. <laughs> I love it, man. That's a cool story. Pretty cool. Okay, so number seven, we have a fan favorite, Old Forester, 1920. A uh, fan favorite for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a, a little surprised that it didn't get a little higher on the list here, but again, the heavy hitters that we have, it's no surprise at all. It's my number four. It's my five. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right yeah. in there, number five. I will say that typically that banana runts flavor on the nose and on the palate just jump out at me every time I have it but today for whatever reason mm-hmm. it took me a while to figure it out and if, I was like I don't even know I, if you play the replay when I tasted it the second time I said there it is yeah okay. <laughs> we'll show that right now <laughs> there it is <laughs> yeah so um, little factoid the distillery is Brown Foreman mm-hmm. Um, they also own uh, Jack Daniels and Woodford, yep. and I get that banana runts flavor on all of their products. Awesome. Um, yep, so that's that. interesting. The founder, George uh, Garvin Brown, um, he, he built this enormous company, and uh, they eventually went public, although 70% of the stock are still owned by 40 members of his family. And that 70% is wealth worth $12.3 billion. Oh, man. What, so if you can divide $12.3 billion by 40, that's how rich he made his his relatives. Man, uh, should have been born a... I, right. A, 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 a George <laughs> a, a Garvin George Garf- Brown, you know yeah, what I mean? Of like, course. Why not? All right. And last, but certainly not least, no. we have uh, from Heaven Hill Distillery, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yes. How'd you rank that one? Uh, that is my number six, just barely. It, it and apparently the Bookers were fighting it out, and it won for whatever reason. And it's surprising because I'm traditionally not Elijah Craig fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say though, of all of their offerings, the Barrel Proofs are my favorite. But um, but yeah, number number six for me. Number six for me as well. Wow! Nailed it! Yay! Look at us being on the same page. There were only a couple that we struck. That we had. Yeah, we were. We agreed on the first, the last, and the sixth place. So yeah. All good. right. So a uh, little factoid: uh, the distillery is actually Heaven Hill, mm-hmm. um, and they were formed in 1935. And interestingly, even though it's Heaven Hill Distillery and not Jim Beam, every master distiller that's ever been the master distiller at Heaven Hill is a member of the Beam family <laughs> up through today. So the beams, man, they they've got their finger on the pulse. Yeah, and they have had it on the pulse for a long time. Yeah, they're so, the first family of bourbon for yeah, sure. Absolutely. All right, so there you have it. Top eight Kentucky bourbon distilleries ranked by us. By us. Rank them yourselves. Rank them yourselves. It's hey, tons of fun. Yeah, get get you a, Maybe a representative. Do them four from each and one. four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend eight. It's tough. It's but, tough. Um, 
definitely go out and get you a handful from the different distilleries and have your spouse or your significant other or friend set you up on a blind. And uh, it's really cool to see kind of where you end up. Absolutely. And if you guys are looking for additional whiskey content, my show producer, Wes here, is getting famous on TikTok. Mm. So tell them where to find you. Uh, well, I am on the TikTokers. And um, r strangely enough, I didn't even know there was a big bourbon community on TikTok until as of late. Mm -hmm. So I joined the TikTok world and started putting out some bourbon content, just stuff I'm learning from Randy and experiencing in my own journey. And so uh, it's been really cool and it's grown quite a bit. And so it's just a fun place to hang out. I typically do lives on there on Wednesday nights. Um, and so, yeah, go give me a follow. It's Bourbon Talks. Bourbon Talks, T-O-K-S. Yeah, so if and you're into the Tiki Talkies, yeah. you got to go over to Bourbon Talks. And in addition to that, you have your own t-shirt line. Well, yes. Along those lines, I did come out with some t-shirts. Um, I guess you could call me a little bit of a t-shirt snob, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am particular about my t-shirts, and there's not a lot of really outstanding whiskey t-shirt options at least that I could find yeah and so I was like you know what I have some ideas for some shirts let's throw them out there and there they are at whiskeythread.com you can go on there and uh, look at what we've got on there and uh, if you see something you like great buy it and yeah. if you don't see anything you like there's tons of great places to buy shirts elsewhere yeah like bourbon real talk like bourbon real talk these are our new the shirts new shirts, the new shirts. and we got I blue now Again, as a whiskey snob, this is the type of material that I would need to yeah. wear. Yeah, Lindsay won't do anything but buy the very best yes. shirts. They're expensive. So if you like the comfy tees, the, bur the new Bourbon Real Talk t-shirts are your thing, and Whiskey Thread is your thing as well. So check out both places and get yourself some t-shirts. There you go. Well, if this is your first time watching the channel, we just want to thank you for the view and tell you a little bit about our channel philosophy. We are all about bringing people together around bourbon. And that's something that's particularly important to me because I lost my brother to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath, I was trying to find ways to get people connected so they didn't feel alone the way that my brother did. And I was also growing in the whiskey enthusiast world. And I started noticing how whiskey had a power to bring people together, even people that probably wouldn't have got to know each other outside of whiskey. You know, ideological differences didn't really seem to matter. We were just all being friends. And I thought, if whiskey can do that, then maybe I can get you, the viewer, connected to whiskey. And whiskey will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others so that you don't have to feel alone the way that my brother did. And also during that journey, I got more involved in the enthusiast community. And I started noticing something that we refer to as trolls. Mm -hmm. And they would say a lot of hateful things to people online. And it made me realize that if... A stranger can hate you even though they don't really know you. There's nothing that keeps me from loving you, even though I don't really know you. And that's why I end every podcast the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. just conclude and just say yep they were all good thank you for watching if you've first time tuning in uh, let's tell you a little bit about we the show philosophy <laughs> it's the first time tuning in we don't know what the hell we're doing we don't know what any of these are um, but we know they're all good and we want to keep drinking them what if Lindsay just poured the same whiskey in all the glasses just to f*** with us that'd be hilarious that would be hilarious she's like I can't wait for this to <laughs> this episode comes out I'm gonna get my revenge a whiskey troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't 
head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.